Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of Awesome Knots. Yes, we're back again to give somebody else a try. Today, we'll be playing with... Let's go to our practice menu here as we can get right into it. Who are we playing with? Well, we are playing with Lone Star. Sheriff Lone Star. Quite the character indeed, available right from the very beginning. Let's jump into his weapons and see what he is all about. So Lone Star, like every other hero, has two activated bull abilities, one auto attack, and some passive boosts. Yes. Now, we're going to be going through them, talk about what they all do, talk about which ones I've picked and why I've picked them, and a little bit about how we're going to try and use them in-game, and then we'll get into, of course, an actual game. I will, of course, have a link in this video, possibly prior to now, that will let you skip straight to the actual game, but, regardless, this is important too. So, what's Lone Star all about? Well, his first activatable ability is his ability to chuck sticks of Super TNT. Yes, indeed. He throws two of them to begin with, they do 20 damage each, they have a pretty decent cooldown, and they go on an arc. The longer you hold down the button, the further they throw, which is pretty cool. Now, what is this all about? The upgrades. This right here, an extra stick, adds a third stick of dynamite to your throw, and it is pretty vital. If you're not using the third stick of dynamite, you're doing it wrong, because this adds 50% to your damage, makes it easier for to hit your enemies, and is generally incredibly important. Using the extra stick of dynamite, definitely a must. Now, what's next on the list? You have Mr. TNT, which is of course a Mr. T-Head, and it increases the explosion size of your dynamite, which makes it a little bit easier for you to hit your targets if you're having a hard time actually hitting them with the TNT. Not exactly the best upgrade, but definitely makes TNT more accessible if you're having a hard time getting used to it. Here, upgrade number three, we have the rubber sleeve, which makes your dynamite bounce, which is pretty cool. Your dynamite will hop across the ground until it explodes. It might only hop once, but I think it hops more than once sometimes. Regardless, it makes your dynamite bounce. It's a pretty useful upgrade for making it harder for your TNT, harder to avoid your TNT, but on the other hand, it doesn't really add anything to your TNT. It just makes them a little bit easier to hit with. So if you're already having a good time hitting your targets, you don't really need this one. Next upgrade here, this one is amazing. The Dark Matter Flashbang adds a 2.5 second blind to the dynamite hits. And that is incredibly useful for a whole bunch of different reasons. It's good for escaping. If you hit someone with a blind effect, they're going to have a hard time chasing you because they don't know exactly where you are anymore if you're further away from them than directly on their body. Also, it makes it easy for getting someone to get into a bad situation. You blind them, and they might start randomly running away from you right into your teammates. It makes it easy to set things up like that very good upgrade. Now, the transfusion grenades are an interesting one. They add a 25% lifesteal effect to your dynamite, which means that every dynamite you actually hit with gives you 5 health back per enemy you hit, which is pretty cool. So if you hit a cluster of, uh, of uh, enemy creeps, you get a whole bunch of health back for each of them, depending on how many actual grenade hits you get. So if you have the triple grenades and the transfusion grenades, you get at least 15 health back from every single target you hit with the grenades, if you hit with them all three. It's pretty cool. Makes it a lot easier to sustain yourself in battle, and that's a pretty key part of our overall strategy with this character when it comes to the end game. Incendiary bombs are also pretty cool. They add a 20 damage over time at maximum level, and it lasts for about 5 seconds, which means that it basically counts as a fourth stick of dynamite, because the dynamites do 20 damage each individually. The only problem is, since it takes a long time to actually do the damage, and only does about 2 damage per second, it's pretty easy to uh, get to a health kit before that damage really kills you. But it does add up. That is our first item, though. Our throwable TNT, definitely useful, but not what we're focusing on in this system. Next upgrade is our bull, our hyper bull, in fact. We have a couple of upgrades here that change the effect of a hyper bull. Basically, what the hyper bull does is it charges in a straight line in the direction you cast it, and it will push enemies away. It has health, so you can kill it, and it will stop being able to do anything. And it has a specific amount of speed that it moves at, and of course pushes back at a certain strength. All, most of which can be upgraded here. Now, the first upgrade here, Super Breed 2.0, makes your bull bigger and push harder. So it adds extra health to it and makes it push back harder, which is useful for some things, but not for what we're trying to do with it. Alright, here down, the Cattle Rebooter means you have a faster cooldown by about 25%, which is pretty interesting, but not what we're going for either. Right here, we have Ribbit Snail Slime, which slows down your enemies, and, uh... It's pretty decent. If on its own, it's not great, but it can be quite effective. Because at this level, it adds 30% slow for 3 seconds. If you come over here to the Mature Ribbit Snail Slime, it adds another 30%. So if you add those together, 60% slow is pretty significant. 
and it's very useful because with those two upgrades, if you hit someone with the bull, they're basically stuck to the bull. The bull will keep pushing them, but their speed reduction from the slow basically means they can't get off of it. So it's good for pinning them close to turrets, it's good for pinning enemies close to walls, and it's generally good for shoving people around and not having them get away. Now, then your options are really choosing between these two in my opinion. This bull charger makes your hyperbull explode when it dies, or when it times out, which makes it do an extra 30 damage, which is quite nice. And the Techno Viking Helmet means it does 4 damage or 8 damage over time. Not a huge amount of damage, but it does add up. I've been experimenting with the bull charger lately instead of the Techno Viking Helmet, but they're both fairly interesting. So that's what that's all about. I generally use the two slows and the explode to make sure people can't get away from me and that it hurts them at the end, and that way you can pin them to things and prevent them from getting away as easily. You don't want to use the... the yeah, hmm. The big thing about the bull is the bull is like a double-edged sword. You have to be very careful when you use it, because it's very easy for you to push your bull away from the towers and whatnot, away from your allies, and push people who might have been easy kills away from them. I find it's generally best to avoid getting the bull until late in the game, just so that you don't risk doing that accidentally in the early game when those kills are really important. But yeah, it's really easy to accidentally push people to safety with the bull, or rather push them into your allies and get them killed for no good reason. It's a bit trouble. It's a bit problematic. We don't really focus on it very much in this build at all. Now, the gun here. The gun's what it's all about. So, our blaster is pretty cool. We can upgrade it originally with the eagle bullets. It originally does five damage, and these up add up to another four additional damage. That's pretty good. That's almost another hundred percent damage increase. So that's pretty significant. We add in cheetah bullets, which increase the attack speed by up to 40%, and that's pretty significant as well. Once you're shooting that fast, it's really easy to hit things, and the damage can really add up quickly. Now, the next upgrade here is a missile, which adds a, a fairly fast homing missile to your... Uh, and by fast homing, I mean it homes fairly quickly, as opposed to clunks missiles, which don't home very quickly at all. They're a bit sluggish. And it has an explosion on the end, which is also very good for controlling creeps. Very interesting. It's fairly slow fire rate compared to other things, but it's pretty significant. Crystal Eagle Bullets here gives you another 4 damage upgrade to your shots, but it is a 1-time up to one -time upgrade for 360 solar instead of four, 3 times 200. It's a slight sale there, but uh, by slight I mean humongous. No, it's a 2-time upgrade, 2-time upgrade. Yeah, I'm getting confused here. You save 40 solar on this one. I'm getting so confused here, my apologies. <laughs> the Booming Bullets basically add a splash to your bullets. This is not bad, but... It's really good for doing crowd control, not very good for doing additional damage, because the explosion size increases, but that's about it. The final upgrade here is another missile, it's exactly the same as the first missile, but it means you fire them basically twice as fast, because I believe they alternate. So that makes it fairly significant. The One of the best, uh, most popular strategies for Lone Star involves using two missiles, and just spamming missiles at people, because they're really hard to avoid in the early game, and they're quite powerful, and they don't cost a whole lot to get up to full power with. On the other hand, I like using this set of upgrades. I like taking the Eagle Bullets and the Crystal Eagle Bullets, as well as Cheetah Bullets, so our damage from the gun gets astronomically high without having to wait for anything special to happen. Each shot does 13 damage at a very fast fire rate, and you can really pummel people who let you shoot them. Or who don't let you shoot them, but you chase after. Either is good. But yeah, it's a very powerful set up that way, and you can do some serious damage with it. And the great thing about it is you're not reliant on your TNT or your bull to really do anything, you just have a huge amount of damage output. It makes you good for killing enemy awesome knots, it makes you good for killing the bots in the lanes, and it makes you great for attacking towers and the drill at the end. Very versatile. Now, the final thing we're going to be going here with is our passives, and this is a very interesting loadout. I have nothing like this on any of my other characters so far. What you have with is your normal power pills, which increase your maximum health, you have your health regeneration, you have your boots, which are very interesting. For Lone Star, it gives you a triple jump, because he normally has a double jump. You also have the solar tree, the piggy bank, and the baby kuri mammoth, which reduces how long debuffs last. Uh, in case I didn't mention this previously, they swapped out the free health pills for this upgrade, which reduces how long things like slows and stuns last, which is fairly interesting and very useful against some characters, not so useful against others. But for this, for this build on Lone Star, what we basically do is, we are rushing our gun to maximum level. Once we get that thing maxed out, we are powerful in a close combat situation. We have to watch out for ranged characters, but we can seriously beat on people who get close to us. So this is a very powerful setup. It takes a lot of money to get started, though. So in order to have that actually happen, we take the piggy bank and the solar tree immediately. When we drop into the game, we take the piggy bank and the solar tree, and we unlock the grenades, because that makes us a lot more effective at killing off bots in the early stage of the game, but you buy no upgrades for it. What you do from that point on is you max out your gun, 
Then, once that's maxed out, you get your boots, or you might have bought the boots earlier, depending on if you needed them. That's a very situational thing. If you're having a hard time getting around or getting away or getting two people, you want to pick those up. And then you go for the grenades, and you max out your grenades, and then finally, if you still have time, you'll go for the bull. But generally, you don't really need the bull, it's a, more of a supplementary thing for this. This is all about the guns and the grenades. Using these upgrades, it makes it a lot easier to get started, because you do have a fairly slow startup otherwise, and it can be a little bit difficult. But once you get to your eagle bullet, crystal eagle bullets here, it gets a lot easier, because you can wreck bots super fast. Once you finish all of your gun upgrades, it's important to get the transfusion upgrades, because you don't have any health upgrades in this down here. You'll notice that. We don't have any pills, we don't have any regeneration. So the health can be a bit of an issue in the late game, because a lot of other characters have a lot more health, and it's hard to fight them if they're constantly at way more health than you. But the transfusion grenades give you a lot more sustainability and make it a lot easier to stay in, while the blind grenades make it a lot easier to kill people who are off balance or to push them into your enemies. And of course, the triple stick of dynamite always makes it easier to kill people, because you do more damage. Now. These, like I said, not super vital, but they're good for trapping people against walls, against your turrets, because that way they're taking a ton of damage and they can't get away. And normally if they get pinned there, they start to panic a little bit. And the explosion adds a little bit of damage to it. So that's the general idea. We're going to focus on the gun, then add the grenades. We're using the cash to make it easier to get, and we eventually get the bull if we need it. So, with all that said and done, I know it's a little bit tedious, but that's the idea. And it's important to know exactly what's going on with your build, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to actually use. Hopefully this is very clear. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. You're buying things in lines, basically, and that makes it pretty easy to understand, I hope. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to hop out of this menu, we're going to hop into an online game, and I will see you when we have found one. So, see you in a second. Alright, and here we are in an actual online game. Same upgrades as previously. Let's get moving, see how it works out for us. So, here we go. Whew. And like I've said previously, we're going to be focusing heavily on our pistol, and then moving on to our, um, our grenades from there. Fairly untraditional as far as my Lone Star build normally go. I like focusing heavily on the grenades because they're what makes Lone Star so much fun to use in my opinion. But this gun gets powerful if you focus on it. It means you have the potential to really wreck people's day. So hopefully that's what happens and not the opposite because that's never fun when you're the one who's having their day ruined. But it should work in our favor here just as long as things go according to plan. So we have a Skoldier and a Durple from looks like. Oh, the other team has a Skoldier and a Durple. We're gonna buy upgrades to our solar. We're gonna buy our dynamite first tier and not buy anything else on that. All right, we actually have a Leon as well. They have Lone Star, Durple, and Voltar. Interesting. All right, not exactly ideal. Drop some TNT there on Skoldier. It looks like our Skoldier managed to steal the invisibility, which is good. If you rush quickly, you can normally get that. Sorry there, Skoldier. I already stole all those health bots just for fun. And let's drop down here and punch Voltar in the face. Apparently, Voltar is buying lots of damage upgrades for some reason. Not sure what that's all about. Not sure at all what that's all about. It looks like a dead Voltar to me. But they might be able to make it out of there. I don't think so, though. Nope. Dead by the TNT. Nice try. All right, we're going to hop around here, come around from behind, and TNT him in the back of the head. Ooh! Did we get him? Yes, we got him. I think we did anyway. I thought Leon did. Oh, Leon got that one. No, no, a bot apparently got that one. That's surprising. However, point is, they're dead now, which is good for us. Now, we do have to watch out for this Durple up here, attacking our top turret, but it looks like we're doing pretty good over here anyway. Drop some TNT on his head. We almost have the 360 solar we need already, which is looking pretty good. We're going to be careful going too close to that center area, because that's where Durple can get us. And looks like Leon grabbed the, the invisibility, and as long as somebody grabbed it, I'm happy. We have enough solar to go back and buy our upgrade. Those, we're going to do that right now before we waste any more time. Head back and buy our Crystal Eagle Bullets, which give us a huge boost to our gun damage. They bring us up by an additional 4, which means instead of doing 5 damage per shot, we do 9, making us a significantly dangerous just auto-attack powerhouse, which should be fun. And here's a friend to shoot, and it looks like he got away from most of our damage there. Oh, hello, being shoved all over the map by these little bots here. Can we get back there and kill Durple before he manages to do anything else? No, it doesn't look like it, but we can drop down to the bottom lane and help push down there, because it looks like Leon is down there and having some trouble. Hello, don't want to get caught in the corner by that bull, thank you very much. Although I will drop down, oh, no, he's run up. I was just about to say we will drop down and harass him a little, but it looks like he's doing that just fine to himself. Drop some TNT on his face and jump up to the top. So one of the things you want to do with Lone Star, if you're trying to aim at somebody and make sure all of your TNT hits them, is aim up a little bit, because that makes most of your TNT drop on the same place. Whereas if it's not up like that, leave me get it, Leon. Ah, oh, what a jerk. <coughs> he doesn't need the invisibility. Yeah, the thing about that is, if you have the height boost, it makes it easy to hit all of your damage on the target instead of just some of it, which is always nice to have. 
So thankfully he jumped away from me there instead of coming back and just pounding me, catching me between Voltar and himself, because that would have been quite nasty. But we got lucky there, so that didn't happen. Let's head up to the top lane and see if we can't push there a little bit. We got a bunch of bots here coming. We also have a Durple here coming, which is not going to work out quite so well for us, but we should be okay. Looks like they're pushing bottom turret a little bit, but there is also Durple getting punched in the face a little bit. Hello, friend. He jumped up really fast. I'm not sure how that worked out, but whatever. I didn't like it either way. All right. We can easily avoid Durple from this range. It's very easy for us to outrange him like that. We just drop some grenades down on his head. We can easily kill off that health bot, too, if our grenades actually go where they're supposed to, and if the damage doesn't hit us through the walls like that one just appeared to. Hmm. And by through the walls, I just mean from way outside its range. But whatever. We'll drop some TNT on Durple again. Drop down below. Leon has grabbed the invisibility, which is fine. As long as it's not the other team getting it, it's fine. It's just not quite as good as it might otherwise be. And that was a good TNT coming in from there, Lone Star. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to spawn now. We don't quite have the amount of solar we need, but by the time we get back there, we probably will be able to grab it. So that's fine. We're going to come over here quickly and grab this solar on the ground so that we'll have what we need. There we go. That should just about do it. Come back to this uh, thing here. Now we have to pick between our Eagle Bullets and our Cheetah Bullets. Not that it makes much difference. They both affect your DPS in about the same way. We're going to go for Cheetah, uh, Cheetah Bullets and Eagle Bullets in alternation. So we're swapping between one and the other to make sure we get a good balance of both. Take out the Eagle Bot there. Make sure we... Oh, hello. I don't know where those came from. Make sure we harass Durple, don't make it too easy for him. I love him with the kill Voltar, but that time, that slow trap there does make it quite difficult for us to get in. We're going to drop some more TNT in, harass out that heal bot, make it more difficult for them to stay alive. Excellent. Now the one other thing we want to be able to do is try and trap our lone... Ah, oh, you go down the ledge there. I thought I had gone far enough to fall down the ledge, but apparently I had not in fact done so. I am going to try and grab that invisibility or let Skoldier have it, that's fine too. And pop up here. Oh, come on. Didn't quite get over the edge before I tried to drop my TNT, so that didn't work out for us at all. And here comes the nuke and all of Zolta Voltar's bots for some reason. He seems to be going heavily focused into the offensive strategy, which seems a bit strange to me because he's Voltar. But apparently that's what he wants to do, so whatever. Who's to say he can't? Let's try and push this lane a little bit. We do have bots over here right now. And if we get over here with Skoldir, we should be able to do some serious damage to them before they manage to get over here. There we go, taking out some of that turret, that's always good. Oh, I'm getting stuck here in the walls. I'm not entirely used to Egrion here, the new level. I haven't played a whole lot on it yet, so I haven't gotten entirely used to how to avoid getting stuck in the bottom. The one thing about this map is that the bottom is incredibly tricky to hold on to because of the way... Oh, hello. Because of the way all of the uh, the roofs are just a little bit too tall to, tall to actually jump over anything on, you have to be very careful with what you're doing. Do some damage here to Voltar. Holy cow, take a ton of damage there from Voltar. Wow, that really hurts. Let's head back over here. We don't quite have enough solar yet to buy ourselves our next damage upgrade, but we can drop down here and defend this turret pretty easily. Take out these bots. I was hoping Lone Star would still be there, so I definitely overestimated that one. Oh, he's got the bouncing grenades too. Ouch. Let us pick up some health. Sorry there, Skull Deer. I just stole it all. Throw some grenades up into Durple's face and avoid the incoming nuke. Drop back down and harass more on our friend here. Ouch. That was unfortunately painful, but it happens. I can't quite make that jump yet because I don't have boots level 3, but I do have enough solar to go back to the base, so we're going to do right that, that right now. They're really pushing hard on our turrets. We need to push back as well. I'm going to buy cheetah bullets this time, so we shoot a little bit faster. It doesn't make a huge difference as to how much damage we do, like I said earlier, but it's nice to be able to hit people hard when you do hit them. I'm going to drop down here and drop some damage right on Lone Star's head. Unfortunately, he got away from us pretty easily there and ran right into Leon from the looks of things. I can't quite make that jump. I did once, though. I might have been knocked into the air or something previously. I'm not entirely sure what happened. Do some damage here. We're watching out for Durple. We should be able to kill him. Yes, we did. I think that was us. Yes, it was. The blaster is really powerful if people let you hit them with it. So that's what we, exactly what we're going to try and do. We killed off Voltar as well. We are kind of stealing these kills, but we got the kill, so that's good enough for me. Good enough for me. Drop some TNT there on their Lone Star. We do a lot of damage with our gun. I doubt he's as well equipped in that respect as we are. We do want to grab a little bit of health there, but not all of it. Leave some for Lone, for Leon, rather. And please come up here. Yeah, please do. I'm not sure where he got that health from, but whatever. That's fine. <clears throat> Drop some TNT on him as he... Oh, hits both of them on us. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. That hurts. We do need to push their towers, though, quite badly. Otherwise, they're going to have a significant advantage in the upcoming scuffles. And it looks like they want none of that. They don't want us pushing the top. Alright, so we're going to have to drop down at the bottom, defend that tower, and then maybe push the bottom there while Skoldir holds on to the top. Ouch, they have a big bot up there. That's not good for our offense. Alright, pop up here, throw some TNT on our friend Leon, and see if we can't do him some damage. Oh man, he's getting good luck with those bounces. They're all hitting right in our faces. 
do some damage here to, to uh, our friend Dribble. Oh, Leon got him. I probably could have killed him if I had jumped there. I would have gotten the credit for it. But you know what? I'm not particularly bothered about that specifics. We are going to head back to spawn, though, buy a little bit more damage upgrades for our pistol. We are losing a lot of damage on our towers, so we're going to have to really recover here after this. Hopefully, we can manage it. Let's hop up to the top there, get around, and try and take out those bots so they can't do anything to our tower. Thankfully, Voltar is doing a really weird build, so it doesn't seem too dangerous to our actual towers. Ugh. Normally, having a Voltar on the enemy team means they can just push you all day, but it doesn't seem like that this time. It doesn't seem like that this time. We do have to watch out for Dribble coming around behind. Looks like he's going to try and nuke... Oh, Skulldeer, yeah, ouch. Uh, he th really threw us, too. I'm not entirely sure how that worked out, but it seriously hurts. And we can blast Durple here. He's going to run away before we get a chance to really kill him, but we should be able to maybe drop some grenades on him. Ow, ouch, 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 ouch. Come down here, grab the solar. Thankfully, we do grab solar, uh, rather the health, I mean, really fast because of all of the guys we've got there. All the damage we do with our bullets. Bullets! We are getting a bit behind, though, which is not great. We drop in here, steal this health as well, and make sure we come up to support our teammates. There's the invisibility. We gotta watch out. Dripple doesn't get back. So if he drops a slow trap on us and then nukes us immediately, that would be bad. These guys are surprisingly well organized, though, which is not looking good for us. And that oh, would have been a dead Lone Star if Skoldier hadn't. Oh, good, we got him anyway. I was about to say Skoldier threw him to a position he would have been able to jump out of. He might not have had level three or level two boots. What am I saying? Level two boots. He might not have had boots, which would make it difficult for him to actually get away from that kind of thing because otherwise he'd have been easily able to escape there. We're going to help defend the top tower here as well, because the last thing we want to have happen is be losing our towers. Ouch, that hurt. And we keep be able to keep him distracted with Lone Star here, or with Leon here, I mean, to push them back pretty hard. Now, if we can drop down below, we might be able to get out of here. I'll let him have those. He needs them more than me, I'm sure. All right. And push up to the top and take out some of these bots quickly. We have a whole bunch of bot power here to really wreck this tower. I should really go back to spawn soon, but I'd love to push this tower now that we have the opportunity. And they don't seem to be here to do anything about us. There he is. Hello. Nope. No thanks. Sorry there, Skulldeer. I'm running away. All right. Let's drop down here. Drop some damage in. Ooh, hello. We can probably kill Durple. Oh, he's going to, yep, yeah, manage to kill our Skulldeer again. Not the best luck there, but we did take him out pretty well. 490 solar is also fantastic, so we're going to come back to a safe place. And I think we'll just walk all the way back, because at this point it'll take us longer to walk. Or rather, longer to teleport than it would to walk. So, 500 solar. We're doing pretty well here, pushing back pretty hard, which is nice. Buy cheetah bullets, maxing those out. We're also going to buy our boots, so we're not going to be so slow. Now we're going to be able to start maxing out our grenades and seriously becoming a powerhouse. Now we have a serious damage capability, though, to really hurt people, which is awesome. And as long as we don't get absolutely blasted here by those uh, Lone Star bullets, grenades and whatnot, we should be fine. Ouch, like that. That's what we don't want to have happen. If we come up the top here, grab this health, we should be able to drop down there and wreck them. Like, oh, I didn't mean to grab that. Whoops. If we come over here, we should be able to grab their side's health and then drop down and intercept them as they try and run away, if they try to run in a straight line. There's Voltar. Hello, friend. Be able to do some damage to him here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'd love to kill their Lone Star, but I don't want to get hit by all those grenades. Thanks very much. Hop up here. Grab the invisibility. Thank you very much. We can go back down this one. Oh, come on. There's no way he knew that. That was blind luck. Ouch. That was blind luck right there. We should have been able to get away, no problem. He, I would assume, he would assume I'd go for my health. But apparently he didn't. He just, either, the, or, or that or he didn't miss the jump. Ooh, that's frustrating. Well, we're going to have to try and get back in this fight here and get back down and defend our bottom tower. It looks like they're pushing it pretty hard. And if we don't get back on the offensive here, we're going to seriously lose this match. All right. Let's get back in there. We have 215 solar, which should let us buy our mm, good blinding grenades. Those are excellent ones. Blinding grenades are a good start. So let's get back down there, drop down to the bottom tower quickly, and blind somebody. Hello, friends. I got blinded too, but Voltar is just about dead. Leon managed to finish him off. Excellent. Now, if we can get Lone Star as well, grab this health here, and hop over to harass him, we should be doing magnificently. Now, I do want to try and grab these health bots so they can't grab them if they get in trouble. And we'll drop up there. Oh, just missed him. We got pinned to the wall. That's unfortunate. There's a bunch of extra free damage for them to do. Hop up here, throw some grenades, take out the tower there. Either us or the bots. Either one is fine. Let's the bots. Oh, ouch. That really hurt. I need to go get some more health, please. Excellent. That's good enough for right now. I'm going to drop back down low. Oh, good. You got to kill there from Lone... Or rather, Leon on Durple. That's nice to see. 
I should probably go back to spawn again because I have a lot of damage here and I really don't want to die. There's no easy health access. Shouldn't have stolen those other ones, but this is good! The Lifesteal Grenade, that was the other thing we needed. I probably should have bought the Triple TNT first because it is definitely the most effective upgrade you can get, but I needed the other upgrades at the time, so I took them. But yeah, having the ability to get Lifesteal from your grenades is incredibly powerful just because of the fact that it means you can get... Oops. You can get so much more sustainability if you hit a couple of... Ooh, yeah, can we get him? Oh, man, I'm blind, too. If we can get a couple hits with those on some bots, you get a whole bunch of health back really fast. There we go. There's a bunch of extra health. Hop up to the top here. We'd love to attack Lone Star if we can. Looks like he's going to go down from Skoldier. Very nice. Very nice. And we're going to hop over here and make sure Durple dies. Fantastic. Blastered him to death with Leon's help. That kind of quick movement is really hard to dodge. Now we're going to drop some TNT right over here, and we missed Lone Voltar because he got tongued by Leon at exactly the right time, but we did manage to kill him with the uh, laser, no problem. Our gun is powerful, and it kills things quickly. Now we have the advantage here, so we really need to press it. We need to push through these towers before they get a chance to recover, otherwise we'll be in trouble. We want to stand behind the big bot here, though, otherwise we're going to start taking hits. And there goes the tower. Fantastic. Drop some TNT right into Lone Star's face. Gotta watch out for him, actually. Run away there. School deer. Good, 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 good. Make sure that nothing happens. Good. We took up all of their turrets now. We have a serious advantage. We have the access to the mouth area. Which, I mean, the force field in the center of the map is no longer actually locked down. We can drop some t TNT in there, clear those guys out. We could probably go get our uh, triple TNT upgrade now, which would not be a bad idea. But we do have the advantage, and I'd love to keep pressing it. Because the further up we can push, the better. I'm going to drop back here and grab the invisibility, which I might, be actually be able, might actually be able to make use of here. If we can get the drop on somebody and TNT them to blind them when they're not expecting it, we might be able to really close something off on them. Ooh, Leon got a kill there on Durpal, but then immediately died. That's not ideal. Alright, I'm going to hide over here, maybe see if we can't sneak up on someone. I'm not entirely sure what we'll be able to do here, but we will take our chances. Oh, there they are. Excellent. The TNT, or the, the Earthquake has gone off from the Skoldier, dropping it towards us. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make anything of that. That's fine. I should go back to spawn, though, because anything I don't do now, I'm going to regret later. So I'm going to head over there before we get too much trouble. Ooh, nice kill there from Skoldier. Yeah, it took out Voltar. That should give us a pretty good opportunity to take these guys out, but I'm really wary of jumping in there right now. So I'm going to teleport back to spawn, buy our TNT upgrades, and then come back, and then we should be able to really clean these guys up. There we go. Triple TNT, the thing I should have bought in the first place, and we'll buy the explosion on our bull as well as unlocking the actual bolt itself. This is going really well so far. Really well. We have a definite, definite advantage as far as kills go. These guys, oh, we picked up the invisibility too. Awesome. If we can drop in there and surprise somebody with a bit of extra damage, that would be fantastic. Although they are hiding in their tower, it's going to make it difficult to do. However, we can drop around over here and kill them from behind. Hello, friends. Ouch. He has, seems to have upgraded his gun as well. I'm going to die here, aren't I? I can't seem to jump. I can't jump. I don't know what's going on here, but my movement controls are all crazy. I can't move. You have been killed. I don't know what happened there. I have to tell them that uh, this. <laughs> movement controls weren't responding properly. That was strange. Whatever, we did a good effort there. That might have been a better idea if we had actually been able to jump out of there, but for some reason we were getting smushed to the left, like we were constantly pulling down the uh, well, down the left key. We definitely weren't, so I don't know what's happening there. Whatever, we're doing pretty good here. 7 to 2 so far is good, even though that last kill is a little bit strange. Let us drop back down again. I, I mean, I know we could take damage, but I don't think I was being pulled in any way. I couldn't see the bull. And, uh, eh, I don't know what else would be moving me like that. Maybe, maybe if Voltar had the push upgrade on his... Uh, heal bot that would happen, but seems a bit strange to me either way. But we definitely have these guys on the run now. They're gonna be hard pressed to come back from that. We have a pretty solid advantage here. If we can just actually take this home and get anything out of it, we should be looking golden here. Oh, we blinded Lone Star. That's a good place to get him too. If we can actually make something of that, that'd be amazing. Doesn't look like we're going to, but we did kill him there. Oh, Leon pulled him out. We managed to do some damage with the grenades, and Leon got him with the kill with the slash. Very nice. We can throw grenades like nobody's business, do a lot of extra damage here. We're burning through that drill. They literally should not be able to stop us at this point. Clear out these bots again. They got more bots coming in, surprisingly enough. I gotta watch out because Lone Star did go over the top. Oh no, that was Leon that went over the top. That's fine though. Oh, he does have the push upgrade. That's what was happening. Okay, that's fair. Now we do have to watch out here just in case they try something, but no, they are down! Ah! That was a very nicely recovered match for us. We had a disadvantage there at the beginning, but once we got our momentum going, we managed to absolutely clean house. And they had a serious kill disadvantage, probably because of their Voltar not being particularly useful. This is never being Medic again. Well, you weren't playing him properly. However, 
If you enjoyed the episode, folks, this is Vanguard of Valor here playing some awesome nuts for you. And don't forget to like the episode if you did, in fact, like the episode. And I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.